All right, so here we go into Excel chapter two, and we're going to do lab two because I found some errors in lab one. And again, I'm isolating just projects up here without the exams and the training. I come down here to SC project Excel chapter two, lab two, and we're going to click on that. I'm just going to pause here really quick and say, Again, don't just watch the video and do the projects. Use this video as a resource in case you're stuck, if you're doing independent learning, if you're working after school, whatever. You can go through the various steps in the assignment and find these instructions. However, don't just get spoon-fed and watch my video and do the project at the same time. You'll get about 20% of the benefit of the learning as opposed to it the first time through, figuring it out, maybe struggling a little bit, I know it's a soapbox. I think I say at the beginning of almost every project. Also, you can, like I'm doing right now, I don't have a paper copy, which is very nice to have a paper copy of the instructions. But what I did is I emailed myself a copy of those instructions, and I'm just working here from my cell phone. So a paper copy is really nice if you have those instructions in front of you. If you don't, maybe you have another electronic resource like I do that you can access those, to access those with. All right. And we're going to start the project. And again, I can encourage you to use the instructions that I have saved, either included in the Google Classroom assignment or I've included in the shared folder on the College Place High School server. Okay, so I'm going to click on this start file, which downloads, bottom left-hand corner. And let's see here, Warehouse Manager, Shani's Trainer. Um, consumers buy Roadrunner online, automobile parts. She wants to create an Excel workbook to track items in the warehouse inventory. I'm going to click on Enable Editing. And of course, don't mess with the first documentation worksheet. I'm going to go to the bin worksheet. And again, um, when we say worksheets, we're talking about all these little items down here, these various little sheets that are within our file. And that whole file is called a workbook. Now I need to follow my own rules here. And please, please get in the habit of doing this. File, save as. I want to save it to my documents folder. Click on the end, backspace, and two, like so. Underscore two. And save. All right. So again, if you save it to your documents folder and you're on the College Place High School, or actually it's College Place School District, this system, you can have your documents travel around with you. If you save it in your downloads, it'll only stay on that computer. Okay, um, go to the bin worksheet and change the name of the worksheet tab to bin list. We're trying to make the information clear and easier to understand is what it says up there in the instructions. So I'm going to write, actually just double click on that sheet tab name, get my insertion point at the end and type in list, whoops, not like that, bin list, enter, there you go. All right, bottom align the contents of cell C3 through C13. When we say bottom align on number two there, we're talking about vertical alignment. Up in our alignment group, this is top, this is middle, this is bottom align. Click on bottom align. Okay, that's number two. Number three, format the list of bins to emphasize that the information belongs together as follows. Apply outside borders to the range A1 through C13, and we're going to make those blue-gray accent three. Okay, so I'm going to come up here to my borders, click on more borders. And by the way, don't get frustrated if I don't explicitly cover something in the demo or the practice exam included in the project. You're expanding your toolbox all along as you go through this. So I'm going to come up here to blue-gray accent 3. How am I doing there? Blue-gray accent 3. And we're going to say outline up here in our presets. That's going to put a border like that in our diagram, what that's going to look like around that range A1 through C13. Again, if I get going too fast, you know, pause, rewind, whatever to go back. Apply the short date number to the four, uh, cell B15. Okay. Now, short date. What in the heck is that? Go up to your different options up here. Drop down arrow. 
There's short day. Month, day, four digit year. Short day. Okay. It says in page layout view. Now right now I'm in normal view looking down here at the bottom. I'm going to slide over to page layout view. And it says to enter warehouse bins in the center section. When I click the page layout view, I can see the various sections of my header up here. I'm going to click on the center section. We're going to type in warehouse bins. Okay. Meaningful header when Shan Shanice prints the worksheet. Okay. Now I can probably turn off my page layout view and go back to normal. Like so. And by the way, honestly, I think I would, let's click back in our document somewhere then go back to normal. There we go. That header is still there. We just can't see it. Go to the inventory list worksheet. I'm on number six now. In cell A1, change the font to Calibri Light. Come up here in my font type. Calibri, there we go. Calibri Light. Enter. Font size, 20. Font color up here. Indigo text 2. What's indigo text 2? There it is right there. Okay. Bold. And it says merge and center the worksheet title across the range. So I'm going to highlight with my white cross A1 through I1. And merge and center. So it's centered across the top in 6E. Resize the width of column B using auto fit. Now, out of it, we're just making the column is a little bit wider than the widest entry in the column. Mouse pointer between B and C. Double click. Like so. All right. Shanice asks you to find any duplicate entries and then delete them in the cell range A5 through A16. Use conditional formatting. I'm just doing this as I read it. Highlight cell rules. Duplicate values. We're going to use, it looks like, that default of light red fill with dark red text. And OK. Delete the row containing the second duplicate values. That would be down here in row 15, second duplicate value. I'm going to right click on row 15. I'm going to wipe out that entire row. And just hit right click and delete. I notice my conditional formatting for that duplicate row went away. But if I, if I were to duplicate some other entry in the SKU, which is your part number, um, it would be conditionally highlighted and it would stick out like a sore thumb that it's duplicated. That's number eight. Number nine in cell B3, enter a formula that uses the count A function. Now count counts a bunch of cells. Count A counts alphabetically excuse me, uh, counts alpha characters, okay, in a cell range. Um, so why do we get to count? This might be something different that we didn't like, explicitly cover in the demo. Let's use our insert function up here. And you probably can't see count A, so I'm going to come up here to search for a function and type in count A and go. And there's that function. It's basically just saying, what are you counting? What range are you counting? Well, it says we're counting cells B5 through B15. And we have 11 inventory items. Okay, just counting cells. Assuming there's text in those cells. 11 inventory items. That's number 9. Uh, Shanice wants to display the entire text in cell F4. That's up here. But wants to uh, format it so it requires less than horizontal space. Okay, so we're going in um, number 10, we're going to cell F4, F4, okay. And right now, you'll see it says reorder quantity up here in our formula bar. That's obviously cut off. It says change the width of the column to 9. Okay, well, either right-click on the column letter and change width, or just get your mouse pointer between F and G. Left click and hold, drag over to 9, exactly, let up. Okay. And, oh, well, we're still cut off. Okay, how do we fix that? Well, we can, and you know what? I did one method one way. I can do this another way. I could right-click down here and say Format Cells. 
maybe the easier way. Alignment. What wrap text means is if it runs out of room on the in the cell, it's going to just put it on the next line. Wrap text. There you go. We, now we can see that whole reorder quantity on number 10. Number 11, apply the shading to the range A2 through B3. Uh, aqua accent 4, lighter 60% to separate the range from the rest of the worksheet. That's up here is fill color. Okay, when it says shading, fancy way of fill color. Uh, eighth column, third row. Aqua accent 4, lighter 60%. Boomba. There you go. Looks good. Number 12, to format the value as a dollar amount, decrease the number of decimal places in cell A3 to 2. Okay. I'm going to hit my decrease decimals, 0 0.00. And I'm just going to just pause it really quick because I've some, seen some people have four decimal places, even two decimal places. You have to ask yourself, is the two cents or the two decimal places, is that important for my information? Or could I round this to, when I say round, I should, should, I, should I display this to the nearest dollar? Okay. All right. So we did number 12. Apply accent three cell style to the range A4 through I4. Cell styles, accent three, which is a darker shading of that aqua color, I guess. Um, number 14, in G5 through H15, which are all numerical values, dollar values, cost and inventory value, um, we're going to format with the accounting format. That's going to be up here in our quick format. Accounting means the dollar sign is in a fixed location along the left side of the cell to compare and contrast that to the currency format where the dollar sign floats just to the left of the number. That's accounting format number 15. Um, we're going to do some conditional formatting here. Uh, once in a glance, which items have the most inventory value? Okay, now this is kind of fun. I love this. H5 through H15, my white cross. This again is number number 15 in your instructions. We're going to go up to conditional formatting and data bars. Data bars are like a poor man's quick graphic representation in a range of cells. So here we're going to go to data bars. It says we're going to use the, use the gradient fill blue data bar, which is right here. Okay. So let's step back and look what we've done here. The highest value has the entire cell width filled in. As you can see, the next highest value, 800, is kind of filled in. And the rest are kind of meh, somewhat filled in to hardly filled in at all. And you can see that they're scaling how much is filled in based on comparatively within that range where they land in the spectrum. Okay, that to data bars. Again, just a quick graphic representation. In cell G16, we're going to use the average function to calculate G5 through G15, auto sum. And you know what I might do here? I'm going to do diff three different methods here, okay? I'm going to use, first of all, up in my editing group, as a variant of auto sum, I'm going to select average. And it says, oh, what are you averaging? Yes, I'm averaging G5 through G15. Perfect. Hit my enter button right here. Okay. Go to minimum. We're going to find the lowest amount and again if you like eyeballing numbers go oh yeah well, i can figure out that seven is the lowest amount well if you can eyeball five thousand numbers at once in place of excel be my guest here i'm just going to start typing a formula equals min left parenthesis select my range of the white cross g5 through g15 and you know what i can do right now i can cheat because if i just hit enter right now it's going to record that with a right parenthesis Ooh. All right. Max. Third different method I can use is come up here to my insert function, which we really haven't used much yet. We just practice. Okay. And do I see max in my selective function? Well, actually, it's right there. And if you can't see that in your usual functions, you can search for max up here. I'm going to click on max and OK. And it says, oh, you want to use the range G5 through G17. No, I don't. I'm just going to select G5 
through G15 as my range of max, max values. And okay, it tells me the maximum value is 40. And that was number 19, by the way, on your list. Check the spelling in the worksheet, excuse me, the workbook to identify and correct any spelling errors. That's going to be review spelling. And oh, it says radiator is actually spelled radiator, which is correct. Change. And we're good to go with spelling. Okay. Change the tab color of the inventory list to blue-gray accent 3 to match the color of the bin list worksheet tab. And I don't know why you would have the same tab color in both tabs. That's funny. But I'm going to click right-click and tab color here. And blue-gray accent 3. Is that it right there? Blue-gray accent 3. Tab color. Okay. And my work sh workbook should look like what is in the diagram. And it looks like I missed a step with conditional formatting. Probably wondering, hey, Reardon. Yeah, number 16. Um, in the range I5 through I15, we're going to use conditional formatting. Home tab, conditional formatting. Highlight cell rules. If the value is equal to, now we can put text in here too. I'm going to put, instead of zero, I'm going to say reorder. If it says reorder, I want it to be light red fill with dark red text, which is exactly what it is. So it kind of helps look at the diagram in the instructions, huh? And I'm looking again at my diagram. We've got data bars. We've got, oh, I see some formatting down there. E4, 16 through 18. Did I miss that too? You're probably wondering, what in the world are you doing? Oh, and it says, okay, I got you. And to the range, accent 3 style to A4, and to the range E6 through E18, I'm applying that cell style of accent three. There we go. So A4 through I4, which I did, and A E16 through E18. So you see how much time I've saved myself by looking at the diagram? There, I've got that done. That looks good. We're ready to rock. Let's turn this guy in for grading. And again, I've got this set to be five submission attempts, and you should be able to get 90% or better, which is your threshold goal. And here's my 2A that I just did right here. I'm calling this Project 2 in SAM, okay? I thought Project 1 was, a, was bogus. There we go. Open that up. And let's turn that in. Submit. and view reports. Again, I can use this feedback to make any corrections if I'm still deficient in what I'm doing here. Let's see how I did. And survey says, how did I do? I got 100%. All right. And of course, if you didn't get 100%, you could use this feedback to go back and make corrections and um, resubmit it after you made the corrections, after, of course, you saved your original file. All right. I'm probably going to move on here to the chapter, Lab 2, Chapter 3, for those of you that get that far, just as an additional learning opportunity here in SAM. Thanks for watching.